I showed a few hypercards yesterday, and uh, the last two were a bit buzzy, so I've been asked by one of our watchers or viewers to show them again. This was the second to last I showed, which is a, a clever little idea, because it's not a, a playing card like all the others. It's just a disc that's been somehow made into something impossible. It's been stuck on the bottom, and if I turn it over, which I don't think I did last time, it actually shows that the... Um, the answer lies not in the stars, but under the stars, under those two stars there with the little brown stains there, there's tiny little cuts there, which allows you to start with a little round circle and twist it in the same manner that the other hypercars are made into this extraordinary three-dimensional object, which seems to be impossible. That's all held under a cube, so, uh, under a little pyramidal top, and you can't get to it, you can't touch it, so it really has to be worked out in the head, and you can't pick it up and deal with it. But the other one was much more mysterious, made by a friend of mine, Alessandro, an Italian puzzlist, uh, and it's the same idea, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the ones you have to twist into shape. So the answer was, what was the starting position? I thought this one, just as a teaser, I wouldn't show the thing when it's back to a normal card again, but leave you to work it out and puzzle over it. Have a smile when you do. So today's I've got three lots of cards which um, intersect. My favourite one, which really for a long time actually, is something that Kofu Sato, a very young Japanese designer, made. He just gave out a business card looking like that. This is a paper copy of it. It had two lines there, sharp lines. And the idea was you're supposed to cut them and cut them. So you get an action like this. You get a cut there and a cut there. And then you intersect them to form this queer little shape underneath, which I'll show you in card form. I did discover soon after when doing it first of all with cards and then with playing cards, business cards, that cut actually has to be not just a pair of scissors, but you've got to go down all over again with a very, very fine craft life to give it a bit of width. It's got a bit of a type of width, as you'll see in the card version. Here's three cards now, which I can assemble. And these cuts are made such that when I put a card through it, it won't bend it around because the thickness of that cut there is the same as the thickness of paper, so it doesn't disturb it. And it's a pretty easy thing to do once you practice it, and I've had to practice it a few times to get the idea of it, and I'm not getting this one at all. Goes in there, goes up to there, no it doesn't, goes underneath there. Oh, bother that, I'll do it with a big one, but first of all I'll show you the end result, which is this one here. This is the Final was either in, in uh, playing cards now, but originally in business cards. We might just have one go in a large version, which I think would be better too. These are bigger cards with cuts. And I'm going to see if I can remember how to do it now. I think I've got the idea. It goes underneath there, turns around. And that's a very nice, because of those cuts have got thickness to them, that sits very happily there without being distorted. That, that's the first two pieces of the plane. The last bit is a little bit tricky, it took me some time to learn to do it, but I'm going to see if I can remember it. Oh yes, that's right. To write this down would be very tricky, you really have to demonstrate it to your friends until they've done it enough times that they've got the idea. That goes underneath there, that's got to come up through there. There we are, and take it further up, and now that's formed a little cross. The final thing is almost trivial, but this one here, no, this one here, lifts up and over and down. And there we have this remarkable piece of sculpture. It's basically three planes intersecting, and he worked out how to make the cuts such that they wouldn't disturb the minimum amount of cuts needed to make these three planes intersect. And it's rather nice to have them at an angle too, not the usual 90 degrees burr type thing. It's a, it's a very nice little take. So that's the first of the ones to show. And it's pretty easy if all you want to do is make a card and make two cuts in it three times. But uh, with paper it's okay, but with uh, a card thickness you must make sure you cut a craft knife and open up and make a very, very small, but, uh, but, uh, about half a millimetre air gap in, in between to make sure it sits very nicely when it's finished. That's the first of them. The second one has got almost, it's a lovely effect, but it's almost a trivial fold. It's a magician gave this to me. It's a box made of cards. And it's got a lid, like boxes you have. <laughs> you 
inside is oh of course a smaller card and that's got a inside that no no such luck but i could probably do it and how's this made it's astonishing that it's just made with two designs of card you just take a card and you fold it in half do nothing more than just that that right angle fold then helps to lock the four corners in there and also forms a hinge there there's a hinge which is one of these cards and the second is almost equally trivial it's just that with two folds at each end so that when a card goes across it like that it's held in position and locked in position like that the rest of it well i can notice it's double skinned in most of the way around so that's going to be tricky so I haven't got any further analysing than that. I suppose I've got to disassemble the whole thing and then put it together again. But there's no instruction, so I'm not yet daring to do it. But it is a lovely idea to make something simple as that. It started making me think because it's got one inside the other. I could perhaps go to a, a card that's bigger, that card there, or to make a really big box. I could do it for this one here, a really gigantic card. Now, I've got a deck of these, the biggest card in my collection. In fact, I can make a deck of cards like that. And a big box like that really interests me. Like a Russian Matryoshka doll, a box within a box within a box within a box, box. Very nice. I like that. The last item is a remarkable construction by George Hart, who's a mathematician, but in particular, he's a mathematician of objects, mathematical objects. And this beautiful product he's made, I think it's absolutely magnificent. It's called a 12 card star puzzle, 12 card star sculpture. Look at that given out as a gathering for gardener, one of these conventions we held over two years in Atlanta. The basic card, and they're all the same, all 12 cards are the same, is just that. It's got a cut here, it's got a diagonal cut here, a small cut here, and a little cut there. What a piece, what a piece. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, and incidentally, it's, um, it's the third installation of the rhombic dodecahedron, but um, you knew that, of course. Thank <laughs> you.